This video is brought to you by Squarespace. If you're a blogger, artist, or merchant in need of an online presence, Squarespace has all the website building, marketing, and analytics tools you'll need to build a beautiful website and grow your brand. A couple of weeks ago, I made this a porcelain corset. And while I do feel that it's one of the most glorious things I've ever made, something about it just feels incomplete. But what? Whatever could accompany the craftsmanship of a piece so ornate, a piece with such glorious detail. <coughs> a matching sword and shield. I use this sword whenever I film the reveal footage and it works fine, but it's not great. Some of that is because I want to use this costume for Ren Fairs, and those of you who go to Ren Fairs probably know some of the reasons why that probably isn't gonna work. So that means that ideally I need to make something lightweight, non-lethal, Ren Fair friendly, and most of all something that looks really good. So in terms of design, I'm thinking we lean right into all of the usual fantasy sword aesthetics, and of course making the general vibe and coloration match the previous porcelain corset. I really wanted to go for sharp, elegant shape language to complement the filigree that I used to decorate the porcelain corset, so I was obviously also very inspired by the costume and weapon designs from The Legend of Zelda and specifically Breath of the Wild. The similarities between my elf ensemble and Princess Zelda are not lost on me, they're actually pretty intentional. So I went for a lot of pointed, ornate shapes and a two-handed greatsword with an extra long handle so there would be more real estate for adding decorative designs, and a big diamond-shaped shield for maximum elegance. And we also have a sheath to make with this because Carrying convenience is very important. Also, I have something very important to tell you. Come closer. This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace can't offer you bladed objects, but they can offer you dozens of professional and customizable website and portfolio templates with the sharpest designs in the business. Not only is it super convenient to build your portfolio with Squarespace using handy tools like automatic image scaling that automatically place your portfolio pieces after you upload them, but Squarespace's templates are also fully customizable and give you boundless control over features like text, colors, page backgrounds, and website pages in general. I do both visual art and costuming, so it's great that I can have a portfolio portfolio for each in the same general location. Of course, if two portfolios isn't enough for you, like it isn't for me, you also have the option to use social blocks and link various social media accounts to your Squarespace account and display recent social media posts on your Squarespace site. Meaning you can include your Instagram gallery and therefore all of your sketchbook content alongside your portfolio pieces. And if you haven't noticed, I'm the kind of person who wants it all. And Squarespace, of course, is very accommodating of this trait because they also have an e-commerce platform where I can sell my artwork. But but nothing, perhaps, is as accommodating as the fact that I can link my Squarespace site to a print-on-demand service so that I can sell my artwork without overstocking or lifting a finger. So if you would like to create a sharp website or portfolio in the non-lethal sense, head to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash pricklyalpaca to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thank you so much to Squarespace for sponsoring my mission to always be a lady with a sword. Now let's get back to it. To start us off, I needed to do a little patterning with my favorite neon yellow poster board. First, I did a little measuring to get a general scale of the props in relation to me because I'm a tiny 5 foot 3 inch individual and I don't want these to look proportionally weird. So I got a decent scale and began with the sword. I, for the most part, copied the proportions of the sword I already had. I gave it a tapered blade, only slightly longer than the reference sword. And for the handle, I sketched out proportions that I thought would be comfortable in my hands and then kind of winged it on the sketch for the cross guard and the pommel and somehow it came out looking pretty good. For the shield, I drew out my overall length and drafted on a fold to get a mirrored design, and drafted some seam lines along the angled parts of the shield, and specifically where they'll be hidden by the molding later. But it also took a few tries to get the size right because I didn't want it to completely overshadow the porcelain corset, but after a bit of snipping and refinement, I had both my pattern pieces. I really expected this mock-up shot to look a lot cooler, but instead it's just giving giant inflatable tube man. Okay, so now that we have the pattern, I'm gonna start constructing and I kinda need to figure out exactly how I'm going to do that. The shield is pretty straightforward, just lots and lots of foam. The sword, on the other hand, needs some kind of stabilization down the center and I wasn't able to get my hands on a wooden dowel or something like that. So... <laughs> My bright idea is to twist some wire together and put that down the center channel of the sword, make it basically full tang with warbler and some wire, and then put some foam pieces around that for the handle. Is it gonna work? 
I'll be honest, I don't know. I've only ever done this with wooden dowels. That tends to be like the best method. I don't have those. So, wire it is. All right, fellas, so I'm gonna level with you. My wire idea didn't exactly work, so we are up to some nonsense. <laughs> Big surprise, right? Like, I tried it, I twisted the wire, reinforced it with two cardboard pattern pieces, covered that in some really strange duct tape that I had around for some reason, and put Warbler around that. And it was a nice thin blade, but it just wasn't smooth enough. Warbler can get really lumpy if you don't lay it down just right. So the next day, I gathered up my humans, put them in the car, and hightailed it to my local Lowe's. And there, I bought some freaking dowel rods. So while I didn't get the two bases done that day like I had hoped, here's what I did accomplish. The shield, or yeah, just the base for it, not the whole shield. So since my cutting job wasn't the cleanest, and I also wanted the sides of my shield to sit at an angle, next I dremeled most of the edges, especially the center and cross seams at a 45 degree angle, and then glued all the pieces together with some barge cement. I also heat sealed the foam before heading in for the night. Hello there, it is like a day later and there have been some developments. So I am of course all for using what I have on hand for projects like this and this is working okay, it's fine. But there's still like a lot of bend whenever I hold it out to the side horizontally and it's just not quite up to the quality that I'm going for. I didn't want to completely start remaking the sword, but there are some situations where purchasing new materials I think is just gonna result in much better quality, so I have gotten an assortment of dowel rods. I really wasn't sure which size I was gonna need. I'm thinking at this point I will probably go for this size since it's the smallest, but I'm gonna cut some new foam, I'm gonna cover that in Warbla, and I'm gonna basically remake the base for the sword because I really want it to look good. So let's completely pivot this project in a new direction and start doing that. So since it really helps to lay Warbla over a solid surface, I decided to use foam as a base to go over my dowel rods. So I cut out two pieces of 5mm EVA foam as carefully as I could, and then marked a center line so that I could begin carving out a groove for the dowel rod. Which I began with just my little box cutter and I quickly grew a little too impatient. Okay, time lapse mode, this is gonna take too long. Because around the end of the first groove, I broke my razor blade. Oops. That's why you buy two box cutters, kids. So I finished that cutting up and then cleaned up the center channel with my Dremel. I'm also using a bit of PVC for the handle, so I added a channel for that as well, which looked like this. So then I slapped a bit of barge cement on those pieces to glue them together, and once I pressed them together with my rod and PVC, everything was fitting snugly in place. Like refried beans and nacho cheese just nestled in a Taco Bell burrito. Now it was time for the lengthy task of carving and sharpening the blade. I began by just carving away the squared edges at an angle so the side of the sword would come to a sharper point, and from there I could begin carving a more distinct bevel according to my design. I basically went back and forth between Dremel and Orbital Sander so that I could remove a lot of material and then smooth it out, and observe as my legs get more and more dirty the longer this process continues. And it was definitely a process. This took forever, but my Orbital Sander really proved helpful for getting straighter bevels on this step, so I'm really glad that I got her. And once that was done, this is what it looked like. I would say that that is looking pretty good. And this is what my legs looked like. My favorite parts of sanding foam is, you know, the glamour of it all. You just end up 
looking really, really good by the end of it. I literally had to brush myself off with a broom after this. All right, the next task was covering that blade in some warbler. So I just heated up two pieces I cut generally to size, sandwiched the blade in between the two of them, and trimmed off the excess. I then began carving away at the warbler layer of the blade with my Dremel to get some more defined bevels, and this was my first time sanding warbler, so I have to say it was pretty satisfying. The warbler dust was weird and kind of sticky and kept getting on my sword again, which was a little frustrating, but otherwise it was pretty fun. It took me a while to get the blade looking how I wanted, but that orbital sander once again came in clutch for some pretty smooth finishing. And once I had finished this step, it also looked like a tornado had befallen my basement. Oh yeah. See, all of this is gonna be like really fun to sweep up. So I had also previously cut out some foam pieces for the cross guard, so next I trimmed all the edges of those to give them a slight bevel. Then I covered them in warbla to give them some proper structure. Then I wrapped the PVC handle in a bit of warbla so that everything had a warbla surface to stick onto, and now we're on to actually assembling the individual pieces of the sword. I cut two strips of 2mm EVA foam and glued them onto the top part of the handle in an over-under pattern, mostly I just wanted a bit of texture in that area, and I then heated up and sculpted a little ridge that separates the top and bottom of the sword handle, added a bit more warbler for thickness on the bottom, and then twisted some faux leather onto the bottom part of the sword handle. I also got a little fancy with it and braided some warbler to add some detail to the center ridge, and then I attached the cross guard directly to the blade since both are made of warbler, and added a bit of hot glue underneath the center. I also attached the two cross guard pieces directly together and also added this molded detail to the bottom, and then it was time for the pommel. For the gemstone, on all of this, I took these clear mosaic tiles and added a bit of metallic blue nail polish to the underside, and then I sculpted a little setting piece around each of them with some warbla. I then stuck two onto some warbla back to back on the pommel base, so now that that was looking pretty sick, it needed a sheet. So I traced out some pattern pieces I had made quickly earlier onto warbla, heated it up and folded those edges around my poster board, heat shaped them to give them a slight curve, and then I got a little fancy again by adding a pretty blue lining fabric before heating the seams up on both sides to attach the pieces together and with that all right we've got good news and bad news bad news first i made the scabbard it's pretty much done it's solid it looks great it's awesome i tried to put my sword in it it doesn't fit i think it's mostly just because i pressed it in a little bit too much on the sides and i could go back and try to undo it and pry it loose but it would still be a really tight fit and i've already kind of bent my sword trying to get it in here i really like how this looks so far i'm not even gonna risk that the good news is i now have a scabbard for this sword so that's cool. I'll paint this up and definitely use it. Um, I do need to now make a new sheath, I think is the word I'm looking for, for the sword that I'm actually making in this video. Let's go do that. So I redid all the steps that I just did to make a new sheath minus the fabric lining step because screw it, that took too long, and I really hope that sheath 2.0 actually fits. Okay, moment of truth. Beautiful. That's the way that it was supposed to go the first time. Okay, I'm not gonna lie though, this is pretty sick. I am very happy with how this is going so far. And with three functional bases to work with, on day three we were finally getting to the fun part decorating everything. So before that, I did a little extra structural work on the pommel to get it looking like the design photo, mostly adding a few spikes to make it look like a star, and then I glued on the two jewels that go on the face, which really started bringing everything together. I also filled a bunch of gaps on the cross guard with some warbla and foam clay, and attached the two sides of the guard together, and then patched some of that up with some quick seal. There was just a bunch of picky finishing work here to prep for the actual molding pieces, but then we were finally on to that puzzle, which next to painting is definitely the best part of this. If you haven't seen my porcelain corset video, the molding is made from Amazon silicone molds and hot glue, which is insane, right? It has no right to work as well as it does. So for maximum preschool craft vibes and enjoyment, I pre-made a bunch of these pieces to make the decorating process as relaxing as possible. <laughs>
Next, I needed to prep the sheath for decorating, so once again I prepped some gemstones per my design, and then made a pattern for all the trim using a bit of painter's tape. I just freehanded the pattern pieces as best I could, and then traced it onto some 2mm EVA foam. My design also called for some straps, so I cut some faux leather to size, and riveted on a couple of squared rings. Next, I went outside for a bit of gluing. I attached the straps and foam trim pieces with a bit of barred cement, and then cleaned up some of the messy edges with my Dremel. Upon returning inside, I tried to make the shield gemstone by molding some warbler over an egg, which I was a little stupid and it didn't work the first time because plastic on plastic is a little bit too sticky, but I used some saran wrap on the second try and figured that out. And then it was time for even more decorating. And I gave my little shield egg a base coat of nail polish, and then all my pieces were ready for painting. And amazed by the fact that this was actually going well, I was getting to be quite an excited little creator. Hi! So I kind of got on a roll yesterday, I'm um, kind of on a roll the last two days, and I haven't talked to the camera a whole lot, but both of the bases for our pieces are now done. I am not going to meet what my upload deadline previously was for this week, but I don't care because look at that. Look at that. I'm so happy. This is just one of those projects that going into it, I kind of accepted would probably take a little bit more time than most of the stuff that I do, and so far, 100% worth it. Sometimes we need to take a little bit longer on a project so that it turns out really, really cool. So now the bases are completely done, which means it's painting day, and I'm gonna give myself an entire day to paint and weather these, and then do a little bit of like beading detail and that sort of thing, because again, I want these to turn out good. Anyways, I have a lot of painting to do. Let's go ahead and mask these off and get on that. That was all dry, I pieced together some PVC with some warbler and twisted some faux leather around that for the shield handle and glued it on. And now time for the most satisfying part. all the pieces base layers of either blue or brown according to my design, and a lot of people were sad I didn't do more weathering on the porcelain corset, so since I do love an overdone aged paint job, I decided to go ham on these weapons. And don't worry, the porcelain corset itself will get some kind of a level up in its paint job since I haven't added anything to seal it yet. I'm just kind of using the weapons as a trial and error step first. Anyways, I began with the shield, adding a bunch of shading around all of the gold detailing to make it a little bit more aged. And then I began the long, long task of painting on all of the blue floor detailing, which was actually not as bad the second time since I've done it before, and I also tried to mirror the design as I went so it wouldn't get away from me as quickly, which definitely helped me to be a little bit more efficient. As much as I complain about it, tedious detail work like this is kind of my favorite part. It always puts me into a relaxing little creative trance. So many of you were pretty adamant about me adding a wash to the molding on the porcelain corset, I actually did this time. I just mixed up some brown and black paint and went over all of the molding with my brush and removed the excess with a rag. 
This definitely helps to add a lot of depth and makes the shield look more like an aged ornate treasure instead of a prop, which is great, but it does dull the gold quite a bit. I might end up going over the top with rub and buff in the future or even some gold alclad paint since I've heard great things about it, but I'm gonna hold off on painting the porcelain corset molding until I get this method just right. Anyways, once I was finished with that, this is what it looked like. I followed the same detailing and weathering steps on both the sword and the sheath, adding a dark wash of black and brown around all the edges and crevices and lighter highlights on all the wider surfaces. I also made sure to age my faux leather quite a bit. I used the same method for this, even making sure to use a metallic gold for highlights so it doesn't dull the material. Finally, the sheath got the same floral detailing treatment on all of the blue surfaces. and the sword got a little motif as well, followed by some brown washes all over the molding. After that, all of my pieces were painted, aged, and ready for a clear coat. For the clear coat, I did at least three or four layers on each, and I may or may not have lost a memory card while making this video, so I don't know where that footage is, but here it's something. But never mind that, we are, thank God, nearing the end of this project, and on the last night, it was time for some beading. Hello, and welcome to my basement floor. Now, if you're a little confused as to why I'm still working on this project, you're not the only one. I was supposed to finish this up last night, but I got a little distracted. It's fine, that's what Friday nights are for. Anyways, it's like 1 a.m. and I'm gonna just add a bunch of beads onto this stuff and then they're gonna be done. So join me in a little bit of cozy late night crafting. We have Psych on the television. So yeah, it's bead time and uh, I'm not gonna mince any words. Yeah, I'm stalling because my brain is not here. There's nothing going on up there right now. The point where even gluing tiny beads onto props that are already made feels like a daunting task, but we're gonna try. <laughs> Yikes, you guys. that it is finally time for the reveal. Hi, hello, editing Kira here. I forgot to record an outro, but thank you all so much for watching. I had a lot of fun with this project this week. It also, you know, just kind of broke me a little bit. I have been sufficiently challenged. Once again, thank you for being here and an extra special thank you this week goes to my patrons, especially my executive producers. You guys make it possible for me to go a week without posting a video on YouTube so that I can make something that's actually cool. I love you all. Big hugs. I don't know what to say. Bye. Dodo. Zyle S. Shay Lee. Sable Skies. The Cat's Bark. Alwyn Hayes. Thea Maia. Ruled by Pluto. Agent Sketchy. Wolven underscore Arts. Corvid Dome. Lovisa. Eloquent Silence. In the Galaxy. Cleos. Meeks Hunter. Megan Penland. Sushi McNushi. Satoni. Mel W. Jim Jiminy. Jim Jiminy. India Gloom. Hypnos. Reflings. Katie, Michael Twycross, 
Sweet Winter Garden, Gravity Drop, Bobo McFoe, Will Schmidt, and Bean the Bread. If you would like to become a patron and gain access to exclusive behind the scenes content on my videos, the link will be in the description. Honey, you've got a big storm.